This is Gus from BackstageAccess.com. We are here at the first Niagara Pavilion. It changes names every year, but we're basically here in Pittsburgh with Chris from Minutes of Moment. Chris, man, how you doing, man? Great, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. Um, these guys just got done doing a rousing set, and I was very interested in seeing this uh, Circle Pits soundboard thing. Explain how that all came about. I mean, it just came about mm -hmm. wanting to do something different, right. I guess, and you know, get the crowd to go crazy for the last song. You know, whether right. we're playing first or last right. in, the, in the rotation, we just want to do something that people will talk about afterwards. And we started out with the whole band doing it, and it kind of just morphed into just Maria doing it because that made the most sense. Right. And it was easier to kind of control what was going on with her. But the, the people have get it at every show, man. I mean, it's sometimes it's a little messy. You're right. But eventually it gets going, so it's been great, man. It's very different. Something that's uh, obviously, if you guys haven't seen it out there, it's, it's, it's different, it's cool, everything unique about it, because I've never seen it before. Has another band tried to do that? You know, I've never seen I it. mean, we've seen bands do stuff like that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, people called for circle pits around the soundboard from the okay. stage and stuff. I don't know if anybody, any well, singer's I actually mean, going the out there. Well, I mean, the actually going in the middle. Yeah, of the I, I haven't really seen that as, as far as circle pitting around the right. soundboard goes. Um, you guys just released the Star Cross Wasteland and uh, on Century Media Records on July 13th. You guys filmed a lot of the recording process before the CD came out. Were you guys um, happy with you know doing something like that? You know whose idea was to film the whole process of that? I mean, it was our our label wanted us to kind of give webisodes. And okay. We really didn't film the whole process, but we did film you know segments of it and things right. like that. And it was really our fans loved it. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be that that exciting, but um, yeah, it was cool. We just decided to, to do it and try to make it interesting and show what's really going on. So right. Was, people were asking, like, did they even record? <laughs> because right. a lot of it's just goofing around, you know, mm -hmm. in the studio and stuff oh, like I that. I think people appreciate that behind-the-scenes footage and uh, seeing something like that and getting, a, you know, you guys and your natural uh, habitat because people are like, oh, these big rock stars, they don't do, you know, and... Yeah, Guys we're like just, just like, normal people goofing yeah. around trying to <laughs> kill downtime, you know, when, because not everyone's in the studio at the same time, you know. Well, people out there are wondering what's going on. Five Finger Death Bunch are actually playing behind us, so hopefully you can hear me and Chris going. But, it's uh, their hit song. Enjoy <laughs> it. It's background music. <laughs> it's the background uh, music to our interview. Um, why did you guys uh, decide to use Kevin Churko uh, again for the third release? Well, we had instant chemistry with Kevin on the, on the, the dream, and... It was like not even a question, like of who we wanted to use. We were, we wanted to do it with Kevin. We want to do our next record with Kevin. We right. Had, so we, I don't know. We just feel like it's special. The the, the connection we have with him, um, he bring, definitely brings out the best in everybody, and he's a real talented guy himself. Right. And we all really respect him, and uh, just feel like we do good stuff together. So it was a no brainer to get Kevin. You know. Well, did you guys with using Kevin? Did you guys decide to take a different approach, or did you guys want to use the same approach as the last series? Well, on this one, on the last one, we really didn't have any kind of plan. We just kind of did what felt naturally, you know, and it ended up being the, what it was, the dream. Okay. On this one, we kind of had more of a plan as far as we wanted to make sure that the metal part of in this moment was, was where it needed to be in the mix and, and with the songs in general. And everyone was kind of feeling a little bit darker and heavier, mm -hmm. you know, the vibe, I guess, for Maria, you know, vocally and lyrically right. was darker. So we just... Kevin agreed with us too. He he felt like you know because he knew what our first album was and he knew what we did with the dream and he felt like the missing link might be just this is who in this moment really is and we need to make that statement clear with this record and it just needs to be heavier. Right. You know. And obviously I I think the fans appreciate it because this is your highest debuting album you know out of your three releases so. I think so speaks, too. Speaks volumes. Yeah, I definitely think that this is what everybody wanted and we wanted it too. So that's right. what makes it right. You know. What are the future plans? You guys are doing Metal Mayhem, I believe, for another what, week, 10 days, maybe? I think there's end? six shows left. We're yeah, really bummed, shows. too. It's oh, such yeah. a great tour. Um, so what's the future for, you know, September, going through the end of the year for touring? We're taking off a month in September. It's Maria's son's football season, oh. so she wants to get some <laughs> of those varsity games. It's his last year doing that. All right. um, but after that, we're going to be doing, I, I don't know for sure yet, but we've been talking about doing a co-headlining tour with another band. Another, another female band and maybe putting something special together. Would know, that be uh, like a Lacuna Coil, possibly? Uh, I can't name any names, <laughs> but something really cool. Okay. You know, that I think the fans would really like. And then right. we're going to be touring all next year, you know, nonstop. Okay. What about in 2011? I was just going to go into that. What are your future plans for touring? And is that going to be like another, the same band you're possibly talking about? Or is this going to be a totally different package? We're trying to get on the best tours we can get on, whether that be supporting a bigger band 
or co-headlining or even headlining ourselves. It's the best way to bring our, our music out there and reach as many people as possible. And next year, the, the plan is to, to tour all year long. And also, we'll probably go overseas, uh, Japan, Australia, and Europe, and stuff like that, too, at some point. But we're, we're working all that out right now. But it's, the plan is to nonstop tour and drive this album into the ground, you know? Right. And have you guys been, you guys have toured Europe before, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite place to play over in Europe? What's your favorite favorite festival? Because this is a really cool festival here in the States. But obviously, the, you know, the people over in Europe really appreciate their music. So... Would you say, I don't know what festivals you guys have played, so what was your favorite one? Well, we were pretty fortunate to be able to play most of the big festivals. Our first year out, we did a whole festival run, and we've done Download Festival twice in the okay. UK. Um, and Download Festival is definitely up right. in the top ranking of all festivals. Right. And then uh, Rock and Ring and Rock and Park in Germany were also just amazing festivals. And then Grass Pop, amazing. It's hard to really, those, the European festivals are like, are like this. It's just right. you know, more like a two or three day thing. You know, mm -hmm. and everybody over there goes, and everybody over there is just rabid, just like these people here, right. and just want to have a good time and listen to good music. So it's just great, you know. Well, 2010, A Star Across Wasteland, it just got released. If you haven't picked it up, pick it up. Chris is a great guy in this moment. you got to see these guys live. They take it to another level. Chris, thanks, thanks a lot, for Gus. talking to us today, Appreciate man. it, Appreciate buddy. it. Check it out, BackstageAccess.com, man. <laughs> Yeah.